This video has been supported by JLCPCB. Hey folks, I think it's time to address the elephant in the room. Trumpet, trumpet, I suppose. My soldering bench has received a complete makeover. You may have seen it as a backdrop in a few videos before. That's not because there were any problems with the tools that lived here until now. In fact, the Pace soldering station was a superbly reliable daily driver, and I haven't managed to wear out a single cartridge in four years. The cheapest of the cheap 858D hot air stations has a short and stiff cable, but I found it perfectly acceptable for an even longer time. The Andon Star all digital microscopes that I've featured before are still easily sufficient for all the miniature SMD work I encounter on a regular basis. Yet all of them are gone because of a series of offers I couldn't refuse. So let me give you an overview of the new setup. As the patients that are treated here seem to be getting more and more high profile lately, it seemed like a good idea to get an ESD safe foundation. On my two other benches I'm already using the Safeguard Premium ESD mats from Wheelectron. They are available in an appropriate elephant color and texture, and they are just great all around without being too expensive. Cheaper brands can get these nice curly edges and discolorations like old linoleum flooring. Mm, no thanks. I also wanted to improve the lighting in this corner a little bit, because for most of my filming I still use a smartphone camera with a tiny image sensor. These are not great at catching a lot of light, so generally the brighter the better. These days the most popular products in the video light category seem to be the Elgado key lights. I was tempted by those too, but when I saw that they need Wi-Fi and a smartphone app to adjust brightness and color temperature, I decided to go with a cheaper imitation. The table mounting arm though is an Elgato multi-mount. That's a really nice and sturdy telescopic steel pole that could be extended later and become an overhead camera mount for example. I like that one, as long as they don't force you to get a smartphone app for unscrewing the locking rings or whatever. Under the desk I used to have a very very quiet oil lubricated Jun Air compressor, but in spite of submicron filtration I always suspected it of spraying oil mist on my circuit boards, which is not optimal to say the least. So for the time being I've replaced that with a new cheapo. Unfortunately that's also not optimal. It has a digital pressure sensor and an STM32 based 3 phase inverter. Sounds very fun and hackable, but unfortunately as it is, it's such a horrible mains polluter that I can clearly see it on the scope screen when it's plugged in and in standby, not even running on the other side of the room. I would say this newfangled oil-free brushless solution has a lot of potential, but I would wait for another hardware revision or two before adopting. This Bofa fume extractor has been sent to me by RS Components years ago for a promotional YouTube video. I can't quite remember but I think the draft I sent them contained the word boofing and I probably couldn't resist mentioning the flaccidness of the desktop exhaust pipe. Well somehow they never talked to me again and we didn't release the video in the end. What's more, back in those days I was completely unconcerned about inhaling soda fumes. I'm still not sure if it is as bad as people say. Yeah, so what, maybe it is that bad, I'm no expert. At any rate, having but not using a proper fume extractor because the on-off switch is too far away would be a peak first world problem. Ugh, I've got this fancy fume extractor but I'm too lazy to turn it on. Oh my god, so depressing. So from now on I'm going to force myself to use it 100% without fail. For that I bought some cheap fake lock line from AliExpress. It's pretty stiff but it has some weight to it, so it can only support itself for about a meter or so. The original manufacturer is publishing 3D models for a few accessories on their website, which I cannibalized to 3D print an adapter for the Bofa lid. To limit the flexibility in the lower section to some degree and help it reach all the way over my workbench, I just added some zip ties. And that's basically all for the mechanical side of things. To avoid any moral indecision about whether or not it's worth it to power on the thing for every little two minute soldering job, I'm just going to automate it. I tried that before by monitoring the power intake of the soldering station, but that, well, sucked, because even if I put down the handpiece for an extended period of time, the loud vacuum cleaner noise continues until I turn off the station completely. The new station, which is going to be the cherry on top of this whole makeover, will hopefully allow me to do something a little bit smarter than that. 
It has an RS-232 port with which one can read power and status information for all connected tools. So I'm quickly combining a MAX-232 transceiver with a microcontroller and a relay module as well as a power supply. I'd like to squeeze all of this into a relatively small power plug enclosure which I already have lying around. That's not a trivial requirement, because there's going to be 230 volt RMS aka 325 volt peak on here. As a rule of thumb there should be at least 6 mm clearances between high and low voltage sides. So I've drawn some isolation slots onto the edge layer. And I hope that our sponsor JLC PCB is going to interpret that correctly and mill them out of the boards. For a small experimental board such as this, JLC PCB's rapid prototyping services are particularly well suited. For only $2 plus shipping they will make your circuit board ideas a reality. And their fast turnaround time ensures that your order arrives while you're still passionate about the project. It's usually a matter of days rather than weeks. Their intuitive ordering form and their new online 3D Gerber previewer ensure that you always get exactly what you ordered. But you probably knew that already, so here's something new from JLC PCB. They now offer 3D printing and not just any old PLA sausage technology that everybody has at home, but multi-jet fusion with nylon material for example, for parts that need superb dimensional accuracy, strength, as well as chemical and thermal resistance. For example I had them make a whole bunch of these covers which will protect the ovenized Zena diode that my next 10 volt standard is based on. That one can get a bit too toasty for PLA but it still wants to be protected from air drafts. So this is an ideal affordable solution, check it out with the link below. Meanwhile our JLC package has arrived and the boards as well as the isolation slots came out perfectly. I expected no less to be honest, in the past I've used $2 PCBs as front panels for project boxes. Because getting these with all sorts of crazy custom milling just is a lot easier than going through my at home CNC process. Today we are going to need that too I'm afraid, because this is the aforementioned Poplar power plug enclosure that I intend to squeeze everything into. A PCB transformer, a cheap relay module and an Arduino Nano. No, I have no shame. To make this look acceptable on the outside at least, I'm going to add an RJ12 feed through connector that matches the one on the soldering station. Because I'm filming the next episode while editing this one, I unfortunately have to say that this detail is a bit of a failure. It's a good looking failure if I do say so myself, but maybe don't recreate just yet. Ultimately it's going to work just as intended, but the cable that was meant for RS-232 is now going to carry four analog signals to the Arduino analog input pins. You'll see why that was necessary in the next video. I rarely resort to such strong expressions, but this is truly a bummer. Oh well, it works. One final thought about fume extraction. A proper bofa like this comes with inspections, signatures, guarantees, documents and even some PPMs. That is why it costs a thousand bucks. Material wise is nothing more than a simple vacuum cleaner motor and a box full of activated charcoal. I don't want to make recommendations about things that might affect your health, but here are two facts that might be interesting to some of you. Makers Muse has documented how to include fine meshes into 3D printed parts. And on eBay you can get activated charcoal granulate for very little money. Do with that as you see fit. Yet another new air moving apparatus on the soldering bench is the best hot air SMD soldering station. <laughs> see what they did there? The brand name is best, it's not like my assessment of quality. Although it is a pretty nice station for sure. It's actually cheaper than the hugely popular Quick 861 DW model, but it's got 200 watt more nominal power still. At 1.2 kilowatt total it reaches 300 celsius after a cold start within a blink of an eye and with absolutely no overshoot. It's got a painful ear piercing beeper and it's not at all shy to use it at every opportunity. I would prefer potentiometers to adjust air volume and temperature over the finicky touch screen, but it has these three programmable preset buttons below which makes it bearable. 
I think I'm going to set up a low temperature preset for heat shrink tubing, a low air volume one for reflowing small components without blowing them away, and a high power mode for desoldering heavy components. The exterior build quality is excellent. The stand is nice and solid, the stainless steel parts on the handpiece are laser welded, and the soft hose is wonderfully flexible, but it could be a bit longer. There are cables inside for the heater and the temperature sensor, which prevent the hose from collapsing and cutting off the air supply. Internally too, looks adequate for the budget economy model that this is. This connector wasn't inserted all the way and then secured with Loctite in that teetering half-loose position. That's true commitment to the bodge. No further complaints, it's very similar to the more expensive quick model. Nice brushless motor and a huge SCR with which they clunk on and off the mains power to the handpiece. They've fitted a huge mains filter in an attempt to hide this brutal power control from the rest of the grid. I don't think that works. But it doesn't matter, because I rarely do single-handed hot air work while performing sensitive measurements with the other hand. Let's do a very relatable chip shortage activity and harvest some normal components from this extra thick multi-multi-layer PCB. Who knows when next we can get our hands on a general purpose SOIC end channel MOSFET. Hmm, maybe this isn't such a good example. Also, the station seems to have a timer built in. I didn't even notice until now. It's built for the competition. And there we are, 21 seconds, pretty good. But this will not become a member of the clean plate club, I think. And the final exhibit in this video is a trinocular microscope from Banggood. Trinocular meaning that it has stereoscopic eyepieces giving depth perception to an operator, plus another port for a camera to document what is happening for an audience or for YouTube videos. As I said before, a super simple camera only and on a star microscope was perfectly fine for all my soldering needs. But at one point I wanted to look at smaller features, like foil and film resistor patterns. And well, that's how this Coppace monstrosity ended up on my desk. I'm not saying that maliciously, it's just that the three to six hundred US dollars price segment of Chinese microscopes is so wild and intransparent to me. There are so many different brands, or are they just public faces of the same company, selling various trim levels of similarly looking hardware. Even Mscope has a few models that look like this, and I have no clue if there's plagiarism involved or if they are just outsourcing some of their products. All that is to say I have no background information about this thing. Banggood calls it a KP HD 1200 and it was around 600 US dollars last year. To reach a state of happiness with it, I had to apply a few minor tweaks first. Wherever soldering is happening, there will be flux spatter and all plastic parts receive little burnt craters. It's unavoidable like laws of physics, so I added a little silicone mat, which is thermally and chemically resistant and replaceable as soon as I disprove one of those claims. More importantly, the large HDMI display can absolutely not be mounted the way the manufacturer intends. I honestly find it mind-blowing that somebody at some point thought it was a good idea to attach that tall, heavy appendage to the camera body, which in turn is only held in place by one single screw. So I 3D printed this carbon fiber reinforced nylon post, added some threaded inserts and bolted the display to those. Now none of the original cables fit anymore, but that is something we can easily fix in the future. In contrast to a camera with a broken neck or a deformed focus adjustment ring. With these two mods installed, I am very happy with the microscope, but I'm not quite sure if I would recommend buying one just now. The included camera saves excellent 1440p 30fps footage to an SD card and even higher resolution still images. But the price for this kit is hefty and a new generation of cameras with built-in autofocus functions is coming. Oops, that was not the low air volume setting I mentioned earlier. The package also came with two bar low lenses, a times two for maximum magnification and a times one half for maximum working distance. I think I will usually keep the times one half installed by default, because the combination of working distance and magnification are perfect for miniature soldering. 
and it keeps fumes away from the internal optics. Here's what's possible with times two. We are looking through an EEPROM quartz window, which degrades the image a little bit. But seeing semiconductor features without a metallurgy grade microscope is fantastic. But yeah, that's about it for today. I'm still feeling strangely productive, so as soon as you're ready for the next episode, let me know in the comments. I can't wait to hear what you think about the cherry on top, the centerpiece for this workbench. For me, it's mixed feelings, honestly. You'll see what I mean. Thank you for watching. See you soon.